what we want to do, this is all about Occupy Concord. I didn't start it. We've had a lot of the publicity that okay. everybody here. Have I got a right side up? Yeah. Free Manning for America. Do you know who he is? No. Bradley Manning? Oh, no. Hey, Ali. You should. I probably should. Let <laughs> <laughs> like me help you. Yeah. <laughs> now he's in solitary confinement. Well, he just closed our account. White check. White check. White check. My name is Art Brennan. Nancy is my wife. We're still together. Even after occupying DC for two and a half weeks. So we learned all about the people's might. How great it can be. What a pain in the ass it can be. You know, we had probably 250 to 3,000 people involved in occupying uh, DC. And you think it's getting close to the end. A new thing happened. And this occupation thing is a great new thing. But I'll give you a little bit about my background. I am uh, from New Hampshire originally, from where New Hampshire. I was about to be drafted in 1968, joined the Army, went to OCS. Of uh, 1970, 71. 71, I was called up by the 82nd Airborne to go to one of the, probably the biggest, anti-war and Vietnam marches in U.S. history. And I was there with the 82nd Airborne guarding some police station in D.C. But those of us who were told when we were soldiers that it was going to be a dangerous place, that there might be bombs under the bridges, there might be uh, threats against us and people shooting, that's what we were told when we got there. When we got there and when we saw it, we saw the truth. And the truth was there were people there pitching in to stop that war and thousands of Americans later who were killed and tens of thousands of Vietnamese who were killed finally died for as we know no good reason and that was within uh, we pulled out of Vietnam within five or six years of the date of that last huge demonstration what I want to say is this I'm a retired New Hampshire uh, Superior Court judge. I served as a judge for 15 years. I was a logger and stonemason for many years. The only reason I went to law school over here was because I got busted up and couldn't do that work anymore. After I, but I, I, I did serve in the 82nd. I was I a jump. That's I was a jump. I was. Okay, you want to try the people's mic? Yeah. 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 Uh, I was recruited by the State Department. I was retiring as a Superior Court judge. I was asked to go to Baghdad to direct a new anti-corruption agency out of the embassy. The name of the agency was the Office of Accountability and Transparency. That name turned out to be just as Orwellian as it sounds. And within a few days of my arrival in Baghdad, I knew that the embassy was setting up window dressing for the purpose of fooling the American people and Congress and convincing them that the executive branch of our government cared anything about honesty, the lives of American soldiers, the lives of Iraqi people, and the taxpayers' dollars. I met with one of the people I would be advising, the director of the Iraqi FBI, out at the Baghdad Zoo. His name was Judge Radi al-Radi. Al-Maliki, who's the current leader of Iraq, supported by the United States, was trying to kill him. Or at least his ministers were trying to kill the man I was advising. Al-Radi lost 31 investigators, murdered, murdered, pursuing their investigations of the Iraqi government. Twelve of their own family members were murdered with them. When I met with Judge Rodney, he told me that al-Maliki had ordered him not to continue with his investigations. Al-Radi had already uncovered evidence of $18 billion stolen and discovered that one of al-Maliki's closest advisors 
had released medical records from hospitals all over Iraq of Sunni people, and that Muqtada al sadr's death squads had used those documents to hunt down, kidnap, and murder innocent Iraqis. They killed at least two to 3,000 people. Al-Maliki's death squads were the security for the health ministries of Iraq. After I gave a briefing to the provincial reconstruction teams going out into the provinces of Iraq and told them what I was going to try to do with my team in Iraq to stop the corruption and the murder, one of the top JAG officers in Iraq came up to me and he said, Judge Brennan, your job is dangerous and it's not only from the Iraqis. There are people here who want this thing to last forever. After a confrontation with Ambassador Crocker, I came back to the U.S. and I was asked to testify to the Senate and to the House about my experience in Iraq. Bush was still in office and at both hearings the Democrats climbed all over us. They said we were heroes for speaking out, that they knew there would be consequences for us for doing this. There were consequences. Three of us were blacklisted by the State Department and the Department of Justice. It wasn't any consequence for me, but it was for my younger comrades. We are still blacklisted. Later, Nancy and I worked for Barack Obama. We went to his inauguration, and joy was in our hearts. But the testimony that we gave was forgotten by our Democrats in the House and the Senate. And now, even after the so-called withdrawal from Iraq, the same criminals who occupied our State Department and our Department of Justice in Iraq are now in Afghanistan with the blessings of a liar of a president. And confirmed by the liars that occupy Congress.